Is it, is it cozy in here or is it just me? It's nice. Awesome. That means it's cozy. There, I think I've managed all the obstacles. Oh. Thanks, Rich. Just a, a bunch of some announcements. One, last week, um, can I just thank the whole family for amazing flexibility with storm and rain and potluck picnic here. It was, uh, were, were those baptisms not amazing? Yeah, it's just incredible. Um, I've had a couple folks just come to me and just uh, explain just how meaningful their baptisms were. And so we thank the fire department for uh, all the water that we had uh, last week and the, 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 little, the little tub uh, that, that we were able to use. That was just... Uh, Awesome. That was just awesome. As well, one of the neat things for me, so here's, here, this is going to sound really strange, but a God highlight for me, I have to confess, baptisms are awesome. Sponge Wars. So we, we play this wild game of Sponge Wars, and how, how, so here's, here's the spiritual thing. I'm, I'm saying this because I think a lot of us could probably benefit from it. Ready? I, I walked away from Sponge Wars like apart from being exhausted and my legs killing me all week long I walked away from SpongeBob's going oh god it has been such a long time since I have just played how, how many how many of you big people it's been a while since you've just played come on so <laughs> so just just the encouragement like it was like oh my gosh we were meant we were meant for playfulness all the people said, Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, Caroline, are you, you are here. I'm going to get, I'm going to get, I'm going to get our community news person. How's that? Um, yeah, come on up. Yeah. So, <laughs> she's, she's in those, yeah, is that, do you want me to hold it for you? Oh, did this just not work? I might have to say kiss me. Oh, it is on. Maybe it's just muted. Just a Check, 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 check. Oh, you check it. I've got this. All right, just a sec. <laughs> so you could kiss me. I'm good with that. There we go. Yeah. Hello? There we go. Is that better? So uh, I, I came across, 11, 11 o'clock, the fire guys came down to the office and said, hey, you need to go, uh, probably going to be a little bit more water, could you move your car? I come back three, four hours later, a lot more water. And, and, and Caroline had kind of been there to kind of see all the firemen, all the stuff. And I just, what, it, was, it was really funny. Her first response is, Jeff, I can't do anything, so I'm just going around hugging people. Right? That, that's all you can do, you know. Well, you can't do anything else. Right, because you yeah. couldn't go into people's homes, turn off no. electricity. You couldn't get to their homes. Mm. <laughs> right. Um, so mm -hmm. what, what amazed you as you were kind of watching the scene unfold downtown? People working together. People of all, as they say, race, creed, color, religion, whatever. Working together. People you would never expect working together blew me away. Uh, Christian Aid Ministries came with generators and people. Uh, Pitt King was pumping out over here in the parking lot. Uh, firefighters, just, just people in general, just everywhere doing whatever. Food came, water, like a anything anybody needed was there. Insurance companies were there by 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It was, it was incredible. Awesome. It was pretty amazing for you to watch. Yes, yes, very amazing. If if anything, there is good and bad. <laughs> there is beauty in all this too, like taking pictures. There, it is beautiful. Water is very, very powerful. 
don't ever think it isn't. <laughs> um, just people working together was the the big thing. And there there was fun stuff like Dave Dipple riding his sea do in his backyard. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> And he says, don't take my picture because I don't have a life jacket on. <laughs> and I said, Dave, I don't think it matters in your backyard. Really? It's okay. <laughs> and, and they had a boat out there with no motor, but they were just having fun with it. Canoes going up and down the, the street. Um, there was lots of good stuff too, but lots of not so good stuff like people sitting on their porches just their faces were just you couldn't have made them smile if you tried you know and they did not want to talk to anybody and you can understand that you can totally understand that so so I, I just want to pray for no more rain because I'm really tired of water right now <laughs> I do not want any more water my basement is flooded but the pump kept up with it my road was closed but I could still get to my place and back most of the roads are open now, but if you're driving, please watch the shoulders of the road because a lot of them aren't there anymore. And if your vehicle goes down, you're going down deep and you're probably going to write off your vehicle, so don't go on the shoulders of the roads. Um, I know one guy who lost a calf. It just got swept away out of the pasture. Um, then did you want to just pray? Will you just kind of pray over our community? I'll try. I know. <laughs> Everyone, put your hands towards Carolyn. Can, and then we'll give her a big yay, God, for just coming up here, eh? Yeah, this, this is for the community and the community extending out to the farms, too, because we don't know what's going to be with the crops that were underwater. And I, I just want, I mean, God's hand is here. It's always here, but was even more here on Friday and yesterday when they were still pumping out backyards and whatever. And I, and I just want God's hand to be on everyone involved, neighbors helping neighbors, people from out of town coming into town to help, Christian Aid, Pit King, uh, firefighters are amazing, uh, the township workers working day and night, still working yesterday, uh, just everyone involved in the cleanup, everyone who helped everybody. And I just want this to continue on until everybody's life is somewhat normal again. And I really do want to pray for no more rain right now. <laughs> yeah. Because we don't need any more rain right now. And I, I just, just if you see anybody, Lord, put, put it on all our hearts to talk to those people who were affected. And pray for them, pray with them. You know, give, give us that, that we can, we can do that. that. That Give us the, you know, the God nudge and, and to, to pray for everybody. And just uh, the townships, it, this is going to be really costly. So we need, uh, we need miracles there that way too with insurance companies and the township. And we just need God's hand in, in all of this. And it is in all of this, but we need it more in all. We need to see a lot of miracles and a lot of really good stuff happening. And, and we're just counting on you, God, to, to, to do whatever it is that you can do and, and nudge us into whatever we can do. Yes, Lord. And each individual house, property, farm, whatever, we need God in that. And I, I'm thanking you in advance, God, for, for everything you've done and everything you're going to do. Amen. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? No, that's good. Awesome. Patty, did you want to come up? Oh, <laughs> uh, wait until I tell you what I want. <laughs> um, the uh, the Reformed Church is uh, um, kind of helping out with a sports camp in Drayton um, this summer. It's kind of it's put on by uh, Scripture Union, and uh, the, the Reformed Church is kind of organizing um, the whole the, the event here to be held in in Drayton. 
And one of the things I'm really excited about is that it, there's been an invitation to all the churches to provide lunch uh, one of the days for the, uh, the campers and the counselors. I think we're expecting about 80 of them. And Sale of Fire has, uh, we've, we've taken on uh, Wednesday, July 19th to provide lunch uh, for this event. Um, I'm hoping to uh, prepare here at the school. We've kind of got macaroni and cheese on the menu, but we'll need, you know, vegetables cut up and dessert is up for grabs. So, so it's still a bit of a planning process. But if anybody would like to help out with the preparation and the serving on July 19th uh, for the, the sports camp, there's a sign-up sheet at the back, or come and see me. Yeah, all right, let's go. <laughs> what other announcements do we have here? Uh, just, just to kind of give you a, an update, um, we had, we had uh, related to worship, we had hired uh, David Wilkinson to kind of be part of it. And then David's had some family um, um, dynamics happening where it's, it's just kind of taken him out of the game, so to speak. And, and so um, just to kind of let you know that we, when we got in, David was our plan A, plan B was the guest uh, worship leaders that he was going to be coming, and plan C was, was I'd be up here with, with Trish and, and we'd be leading worship that way. And so we're kind of in B-C mode. <laughs> that almost sounds good. Because <laughs> he's coming, you know that? Again... Um, and, and so what that means is like, uh, we, we'll have some guest worship leaders that will be coming um, when I uh, start holidays. I start holidays in two weeks. Everyone say, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Come on, uh, put your hands forward. Bless me on holidays already. I know. <laughs> Jesus, thank you for holidays. Oh, keep your hands up. And thank you. Here's, here's something that you might not know. Uh, Tuesday, I fly out to Oroville, California uh, for my own personal inner healing prayer ministry time. Um, and, and so um, just that you, you keep Pastor Jeff in, in your prayers, this is, this is something that we, we want to celebrate. Uh, the body of Christ getting healed up, ministered to. Um, for those that are new to, to us and PIH, PIH invites both um, the, the pastor and his wife to, to be involved in, in kind of inner healing, counseling on a regular basis uh, so that we're just more whole when we do ministry. So why don't you say a little prayer for me while I go to Oroville? Yeah. Okay, you can shout it out. Thank, shout it out, Carol. Uh, she's staying home. She's still got to wrap up school. It applies to both of us. I get healed, she gets healed. Trust me. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you, God. Um... So, so, so that's that's just a little uh, little update on on our worship, um, and then in, in response to those kind of things, we also had that that congregational meeting. Just to, are you okay? I'm just going to give you a little update on stuff before we go into the word. All right, is that all right, family? Okay. So, just a little update on things. We had the congregational meeting, and at that time, we had kind of recognized that we needed to pull our team leads together. So those are the folks that oversee like uh, children's ministry, youth ministry, senior, junior, uh, um, hospitality. Uh, there's a, our team leads. And so um, the board, had, and, and part of it was also to kind of begin to strengthen the relationship with the board and the team leads. And, and so we've, we've met twice now. We've done, Cindy has been so gracious in leading us through SOAR, um, which is an acronym for, help me, strengths, opportunities, aspirations, results. And, and so, um, so the team leads have kind of worked through that process. And our heartbeat is um, 
we're, is in August, so the b first week of August when we're back from holidays, the board will meet again. We hope in the second week of August, second, third week of August, to have a kind of survey with that same thing for more of our family focus. So the same questions that were kind of asked to our team leads, we'll be asking that of you. Where, where do you see these, these kinds of things? And we'll first do it over a kind of uh, survey uh, over, over the internet, but then there'll be three opportunities in September where we hope to have kind of in person. So I think it's a Tuesday night, a Thursday night, and a Saturday just to try and mix it up for folks based on your schedules and stuff like that. And so that'll, that'll be an opportunity for you guys just to kind of um, ask questions. In many ways, participate in the same thing that our team leads did, looking at the strengths, looking at opportunities, looking at aspirations, uh, and, and then, God, what do we need to do to get the results for the kind of community that we want to be and become and continue moving forward from here? Uh, and, and so that, that, will, um, that, that, that will be kind of unpacked for us as we move into August. So all the people said, amen to that. And then uh, I mentioned how when I had gone camping with Abby, so uh, I, I sat down in my nice hammock, looked out over Georgian Bay, thank God for Pentecost Sunday, because Pentecost Sunday was like just incredibly incredible with Holy Spirit presence here. And, and oh, you'll be glad to know Bill and Sue Duplay will be here again on the 16th of July. Everyone say, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Um, and so I, I remember sitting and looking out over Georgian Bay and going, God, thank you. Thank you for Sunday. And, and I clearly heard the Lord say, Jeff, you need a building because I want to do this every day. 365 every day. Now, people, people have been telling me I need a building for a long, Well, that we need to get going on the whole building fund and all that kind of stuff for a while. And your pastor has been slow. Everybody say slow. Um, but, but for me, I, I, I need a word to move on. And, and, and so, um, in your, in your, on your chairs this morning, this, this is, Jim introduced this, this concept um, in that congregational meeting. <laughs> Jim, Jim is just this incredible kind of numbers guy. And so, if you read Proverbs uh, 16.9, it says, we, we can make plans but the Lord directs our steps. And so in many ways, wanting to do things twofold. It says we can make plans. So in some sense, Jim, I just, he, he oh, Lord, no more rain. Oh. Um, we, the, the scripture says we make plans, but the Lord directs our steps. And so there, Jim, Jim has come up with a way that he feels is manable, manageable and doable for us as a body. And I think, for folk that had listened to Jim when he had given his presentation, there was just this, oh, that 1.6, 2.6 million, whatever it was, seems doable in this, in this kind of world. And, and, and so, uh, so the plan is, if we can just begin to establish and begin to kind of give over and above, and, and Jim said, let's start soft. Let's just go $1 a day. Jim was great, because he... <laughs> He did the calculations. He says, I will, I will come up with a, a can of, you know, the like $14 tin of coffee? He says, for a $14 tin of coffee, if, if you're buying a coffee every day, is it, for those that are addicted to coffee, just forgive me for this moment. I'm using coffee as an analogy. It could be something else. He says, for if, if, if you use this can of coffee rather than buy a coffee every day, he says, I make you money. You, the money you'd save on 365 for your coffee, you would still have $200 in the bank by the end of the year. Do you not love Jim Johnson? <laughs> he says you could still give $365 to the church and then have 200, I, I think it was close to $200 left over in your bank account uh, at, at the end of the year. That's for you? Me, oh, <laughs> that's awesome. Medium coffee for those that are. <laughs> Think how much you could save if you're the double double extra large. <laughs> um, so, so what? So we've put these pledges out. Our, our heartbeat is more to to measure pledges than numbers, than 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 the the finances. In the sense of, I think Jim was saying if if we could all of us contribute in this way. Uh, then in, in, 
it's a, four, it's a seven year plan. So this is the seven year. Four years of $365 um, for, from, from all of us as givers. Uh, in, in four years, there's a quarter million dollars ready to go. And then we look at the big push over the next three years. Uh, for God, what, where are you taking us? Um, and, and so this is just something you can take home if you'd like. You can pray on it. Or you can sign it today and, and stick it in the, in the uh, off, offertory spot. All the people said? Amen. And then, you know, like if God says, well, I've got this building for you right now, the Lord directs our steps. And, and exciting for me in the, in the sense of, some of you may not know, but I've, I've always loved the old Craftsman building heading out uh, to um, Elmira. And uh, in fact, when we bought the sound equipment, the sound guy drove us there and we prayed over that specific uh, site so that the material that we got would be able to facilitate even in that space. Um, so four and a half, uh, five years later, we're having three worship events over the summer. Where? In the old Craftsman building. And it, yeah, can we... Um, and, and so the, the, fam- the family there, it was so great. I said, uh, last year we approached them because we wanted to do a worship night there. And, and I said, Leroy, uh, what would you think if we did church in your, in your building? I said, well, I think of putting some sheep in there for the kids. <laughs> it's messy. <laughs> Just prepare yourself. Take your allergy pills, those that need allergy pills. <laughs> I said, well, are you thinking like your sheep or mine? And I, I just I, let, let's go bless bless them tonight, and uh, and just just so tonight six o'clock. If you're interested, it's just a free worship. If you have an instrument, if I think Lori said, if you play spoons, um, our our heartbeat is just to come together as a community and worship Jesus. So we're going to host His presence, call people together, host His presence, and celebrate God's goodness. And, and that's from 6 until 9 uh, at the old Craftsman building. It's, if, if you go through the roundabout, you've gone too far. Have I... Have I, I, th- I think I've done all my announcements. I haven't? I've, I've already done Abby's announcement. She was up first. You were late. <laughs> I know. We're, are we not glad Paul is here? Honey, you can come late, go early, do whatever you want. Ask me to do another announcement. Uh, I don't know why I came down here. I, oh, oh, the prayer? Thank you, Keith. Offertory prayer. Are you ready, troops? Hands on your heart one more time. <laughs> God, all that we have is yours. And we offer it up to you. Continue to work your miracle of love in all we are and in all we do. Amen. All right. You know where we're going? Mark chapter 1. <laughs> I don't know if your page is getting thin, but mine is. Mine is. Um. Mark 1, uh, 17, I just want to highlight that again. Again, this response of re- restoring first love. And, and I really feel like there's this, there's this invitation of Jesus. For some of us, it might be afresh. Uh, for some of us, it, it, we, we may never have responded to this. Come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And, and where, I, where, I, where I'm at, I think I've mentioned to you, um, my friends in Oroville have encouraged me, no more podcasts, no more messages outside of the Gospels. Just in many ways. So 
I, I'd like to get past Mark chapter 1, and I think, praise the Lord, I will be able to like, come. When I get back from holidays, I expect us to be at least on Mark chapter 2. <laughs> if, if what the Lord's speaking to me, uh, I think we might get to Mark chapter 2 in August. I, I hope that still brings you here. <laughs> Shouldn't have told him, Lord. But, but this whole invitation, come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. Come, there, there's this invitation of Jesus to, for every one of us. Come, he, he's calling us into intimacy, calling us into relationship with God. Follow me. There, there, there's something he wants to show us. And, and my prayer, my prayer is that that as we read the Gospels, see, there's a, there's a lot of talk about identity, and, and, and we celebrate the identity piece. And, but I think a lot of our identity will discover when, when we're in Christ, our identity points us in the direction of others. Come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. So, so we looked at a couple of things again, and I'm just I'm just reviewing because I feel like I need the review. Mark one one says this is the good news about Jesus Christ. Everyone say good news about Jesus. So we have this good news about Jesus, and and the very fact that it's good news. This is and this is a declaration that begins the whole Gospel of Mark is is that it's linked to God who is good. To God who is good. And, 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 and we've, we've, we've gone over this before, but how many of us are still yearning for a clearer, cl- clearer revelation of how good God is? Right? That, that, his, his good, that we would truly believe God is good. You know, I, I was talking with someone and... There, and and just family tragedy after family tragedy after family tragedy. And how many of you have been in those places where, where the situations are difficult, the, all that kind of stuff, and, and you still have to stand on the truth that God is good? Re- regardless of what I see in front of me, circumstantially, I, I need the faith to believe the truth of the good news. And so when we say good news about Jesus, oh, I had this, beauti- I, I, I had this beautiful question. Can, can Jesus be a father figure for me? And I, I, just, I just let it trickle down over, 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 over my body, and it's like, absolutely. Absolutely. Who does Jesus reveal? Absolutely. And then I want you to say he's making a way. There may be situations and circumstances in your lives, and, and when we read the Word of God, it says this good news about Jesus, and he says, Look, I'm sending a messenger ahead of you. I feel like uh, you know I'm repeating this, aren't aren't you? Right? Like you go I've heard this scripture before. I, I feel like I could have Mark chapter one memorized by the end of this. <laughs> that was awesome. Elaine looks at me and said, "Good." <laughs> God is making a way. He's preparing a way. On even on the back of your pledge uh, cards, it's, I, I prepare a house for you. In my Father's house, there may, there are many rooms, and I go to prepare a place for you. God is preparing people and places for you. Oh. And then that, then that whole piece of they had repented of their sins and turned to God. He, John was in the wilderness and he preached that people should be baptized to show that they have repented of their sins and turned to God to be forgiven. I, I love the fact that this message of repentance draws people. And, and I just, I, I invite us to reflect on even the value of repentance 
is not lost in the good news. John, John, verse 7. John announced, Someone is coming soon who is greater than I am, so much greater that I am not worthy to stoop down like a slave and untie the straps of his sandals. I kept reading this over and over and over again, and I recognized our confession, our repentance, makes us participants in, in, bring, in seeing Christ glorified. Our confession, our repentance, makes us participants in seeing Christ glorified. How many of you long to see Christ glorified? I, I want you to see our repentance, our confessions. How many love repentance and confession? We should. Like, here's, this is the good news. Like, in many ways, see, old thinking goes, repentance, confession, I got caught. Dang, been busted by God. Oh, I bet you he's angry, just like my earthly father was. I have, oh my, oh my kids, I just think of all the inner healing, right? Go ahead, you do too. Right? But the, the, the new covenant is my repentance, my confession, brings glory to Jesus Christ. And sets who free? We, our, our confession and repentance is the beginning of, of seeing Christ magnified and glorified on the earth. And, and right here, John, he says, Someone is coming who is greater than I am, so much greater that I'm not even worthy to stoop down like a slave and untie the straps of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And everyone said, yes. yes. <clears throat> One day Jesus came, and, and so, so I want you to see, the confession, the repentance. I'm not worthy, right? I, I remember mine. Mine was, um, I just got to this point where I realized I am not connecting with God. I see all these people around me that are, seem to be connecting with God really, really well, and I'm not. And, and I remember, my, you want to hear my four-point four sinner's prayer? For those of you that were raised in those kind of evangelical circles. My four-point sinner's prayer? God, I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm sick. That was my four-point center of prayer. And it was just this, this, I am not in relationship with you. Help me. That, that's what I meant when I said I'm sick. Like, what is it, God? And then I, I tell you the truth. He took my life. And I, like, all of a sudden, I was in this flow that I had never been in before of his presence, of connecting with him. And then shortly after that, I was on my way to Hong Kong. Confession and repentance is a beautiful thing. Say, say it. Confession and repentance. Beautiful thing. Sets me free and sets Christ up to be magnified and glorified in my life. Then here was the amazing thing. We get the baptism. This, this is really where I want to go again. We get the baptism. And at the baptism, remember I said it was kind of like, let's do the time warp. Remember, I, 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 not the dance, but you can do the dance. But, but there's, there's this time warp thing happening where, I, are you ready? I, I stole one of Paula's nylons. So, I was, I was trying to do, this is, this is going to be my big space age demonstration that I was, I was trying to do last week, remember? Where, where like on some level, shh, baptism, hang on just a second. Oh, this is, this is not fun. <laughs> I do not envy you, ladies. All right, so as best I can. Remember, I, I felt like there was this time where the baptism of Jesus, I want you to see, is almost like going back to the Garden of Eden. Right? So if this is the Garden of Eden, right, we had the fall, yes? And we've had all this history of the fall, right? Years and years and years and years and years. The, the, the life of Christ that was meant to be in the Garden, right? The, whoa, the separation from God's presence, all that kind of stuff. Years and years and years. 
And then on comes the scene, Jesus Christ, the new Adam. Everyone say the new Adam. The new Adam. And, and he comes to creation. And at this baptism, remember the, the phrase that God gave me last week was, Jesus at his baptism in many ways is saying, my life for yours. And in our baptism, it's your life for mine. My life for yours, your life for mine. And so what happens, this is getting nice testing me here so what happens at baptism is it's like eternity so time time in jesus right like all how many of you know jesus is god so it's like all eternity in the flesh baptism right this 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 space here right kingdom of darkness over the earth from this moment Baptism of Jesus comes. Lord, help me do this right. Anyway, imagine. (laughs) Steven Spielberg had this problem when he started out too, you know. (laughs) Star Wars wasn't an instant success because it was just easy getting those things to work. (laughs) So if you can imagine, from this direction... (laughs) Right? Jesus has landed on planet Earth. He's coming up to his baptism. I am so high sci-fi, aren't I? You're just glad I'm not drawing stick figures to try and figure this out. So, so eternity is coming our way. It's coming our way. In his baptism, watch this. The kingdom of God is now being extended. We've entered a new day. Eden, like it's, it's amazing. The Spirit then compelled Jesus into the wilderness. I wanted you to see last week that so often, so often I hear this, g- g- greater levels, greater devils. Um, to step out in faith in Christ is to get hammered by Satan. Have you heard stuff like that? Have you experienced stuff like that? The truth is yes, but there's a greater truth that we need to associate ourselves with. And it's related to this one right here. So the kingdom of darkness, yes, reigned on the earth. And I know it, it almost, never mind. The kingdom of darkness reigned on the earth. We get Jesus coming to his baptism. The kingdom of heaven has come. Like that is verse 15. Later on, after John was arrested, Jesus went into Galilee where he preached. The, pr- the time promised by God has come at last. Everyone say, the time promised by God. Your time has come. Your time, the, your time has come. The time promised by God has come for you. Okay, put your hands on your heart. That's a good word. God's promised time. Go ahead, say that. God's promised time. Is now. So, so we have we have the kingdom. I want you to see we have the kingdom of heaven in, being advanced, and Jesus in in many ways is is doing what Adam couldn't, right? He who is without sin, and 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 we know that because he was compelled into the wilderness, compelled. That that like it wasn't like. I want you to see if you step out for Christ. To stop seeing that I've stepped out for Christ, now the enemy's amping it up. God is compelling you into a situation where you're going to encounter the enemy. And it is an opportunity for you to express the kingdom of heaven. Stop going, woe is me, the enemy's picking on me. Jesus was compelled into the wilderness, tempted by Satan, with the wild animals. Does it ever feel like you're surrounded by wild animals? Whoa! But, but, but look, if, if the kingdom... He's, it, I, I, I just really feel like God wants to transform your wildernesses into gardens of Eden. 
what you see as a wilderness is, has changed because of the kingdom coming in. So you may be surrounded by wild animals, but in Eden, they were good. And the angels cared for him. Look to your neighbor again and just say, I got angels. And they're, gonna, they're taking care of me. So, let, let's go to 21. This is, this is where it, gets, this is where it get, gets new. Is that a good review from last week? I just, I, just, I just really feel like there was some fresh stuff on that. Oh, so let's... Are, are you guys... We're going to do the time warp? Body of Christ, shall we do the time warp? Is the kingdom of heaven now or not? Is it now or not? Then we're doing the time warp. Does the kingdom of God transform the circumstances and the situations in which you live in? Yes. Kingdom of heaven is now. It's been initiated. If you're compelled into the wilderness, see. I want you to see your circumstances and... How many of you know if you have Jesus in you, then that's the Spirit of God compelling you. Like when you step out your door into whatever wilderness it may be, one, I want you to start thinking, I'm in the Garden of Eden. Because the kingdom of heaven is now. And what feels like a wilderness is an opportunity for me to expand the kingdom. I'll say it again. What seems like a wilderness to me is really I'm under the, the compelling of the Spirit to extend the kingdom, to defeat the plans, purposes of the enemy. And, and, and so, so we see that Jesus, <laughs> remember, come, we come to Jesus, right? Follow me. I've got something to teach you. I've got something to teach you. Watch me and learn. Pay attention to the things that I do. Because in our baptism, Christ in me, the hope of glory. Yes? What, what he accomplished, right? So that, that act of his baptism, I've got to hang here for again. Your, my life for yours. You know, it was a baptism of repentance of sin. Jesus was not repenting of sin. He was taking on the sins of of the world. It was a prophetic gesture for where he was going to go and what he was going to do. When he took on and John comes and says, I'm not worthy, John's repenting. John's repentance is prophetic of the very fact that when we repent, Jesus Christ is going to be glorified. Jesus takes on the sin of the world in that moment. He goes under the water. He comes back up. The heavens open. God speaks. We got Father, Son, Holy Spirit all showing up. It's like glorious. And then he gets compelled into the wilderness, does not fall to the temptations of Satan. Follow me. Watch me and learn. I don't have to fall to temptation. I don't, I don't have to participate in, in where Satan is trying to tempt me. Everyone say, that's a good word. Holy Spirit, write that on my heart now. Because <laughs> right? we're advancing the kingdom. And he's saying, follow me. Watch and learn. He defeats the enemy. Say, I defeat the enemy. In Jesus Christ... And I am in Christ. I defeat the enemy. Okay, ready, ready for more watch and learn? Jesus and his companions went to the town of Capernaum. Whoa, got to stop there. I know, you go, why? Well, Jesus did. We may as well stop at Capernaum too. Companions. Do 
Jesus and his companion. That's <laughs> so funny. I, I did... Uh, I, I, I did Mariah's uh, graduation and, and ha- had to give a little blurb there, but the valedictorian gets up and uh, <laughs> she, she goes, this has been a good opportunity for us as comrades. Now some of you might not even know what comrades mean and looks at Maya. <laughs> Anyways, it was, maybe it was just a love gesture between them. And Maya and I are driving along, we're laughing about it. She goes, so dad, what does comrade mean? <laughs> it was just it was just one of those funny moments. Compa- Jesus and his companion. I I I just continue to encourage you to be developing relationships in this body. I don't don't I, I I pray that we as a church can get organized and coordinated and all those kinds of things and be this incredible like little McDonald's where everybody gets put in their proper place, but no I don't. But I I just I want to encourage you to find companions to do this walk with. Jesus and his companions. There's friends, pe- people that know what you're going through, people that, that are experiencing stuff with you and you get to experience stuff with them. And, and it's, it's fo- again, follow me, Jesus and his companion. They went, they went to Capernaum. When the Sabbath day came, he went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching for he taught with real authority, quite unlike the teachers of the religious law. Real authority. I remember the first time I was at Silver Lake United Church Camp and Stephen Cowley was up on the front and, and he was talking about Jesus and did I have a relationship with Jesus and I, I didn't at the time. And, and, but he would talk. But how many, how many of you know you glow? Did you know, did you, know you glow? Christ is in you. You you glow. Stephen wouldn't have known he 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 glowed for me. But there was something about Stephen's face. Oh, like even even um, Lewis. When Lewis got baptized last week, I don't know if you saw it. I'm not going to pull you up to the front. You're safe, man. <laughs> when when Lewis came out of the water, like there there was just something like he just you. Look to your neighbor and say, I glow. <laughs> there, there is an, I, just, I want to affirm there is an authority in you in Jesus Christ. There, there is something that people see. And, and I say that is that you have truth to speak. It, you, you don't have truth to condemn. But your truth about your relationship and your walk with Jesus makes you glow. D- don't be shy. And, and then, suddenly, we're at verse 23. Suddenly, a man in the synagogue, and I'm getting close here to wrapping up, and everybody said, yeah. Suddenly, a man in the synagogue was possessed by an evil spirit, uh, began shouting, why are you interfering with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Oh. That, that's what every Christian says when the enemy starts attacking, doesn't it? <laughs> Go on, someone, someone, give, someone give this scripture an amen and hallelujah. Come, follow me. What, what's he showing us here? Has, has he, 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 he didn't kind of say, demons come out of people. He's just glowing. He's just living his life. He's teaching about the kingdom of God. 
And that stirs something up. I want you to see why are you interfering with us? Go ahead, say it. I get to interfere with the enemy. I get to interfere with the enemy's plans. Christ in me interferes with the enemy. The enemy wants to think that he's you to think he's a threat. Like I, I'm, I'm looking at this right because I'm, I'm in this space personally, going, Jesus, I, I want to follow you. Jesus, teach me what it's like to, to, to fish for people. And and I read this and it's like. Go ahead, say it. I intimidate the enemy. That's truth. We we got to get that into us. Let's say it again. I intimidate the enemy. You don't have to intimidate the enemy. You do intimidate the enemy. How, how many of you have ever screamed at the enemy before? Did Jesus scream here? How many of you, when you're screaming at the enemy, in your head you're going, oh crap? This is, this is amazing. I intimidate the enemy. Okay, hands on your hearts. God, thank you that Holy Spirit in me agrees with this truth. Brain, I'll give you time, but I don't want it to be too long. Because I'm tired of letting the enemy deceive me, cheat me, rob me of my victory that I have in you. In Christ, I intimidate the enemy. He's concerned about my presence. I don't have to be afraid when God compels me into the wilderness. Jesus cuts him short, be quiet, come out of the man, he ordered. And at that moment, the evil spirit screamed through the man into the convulsion and then came out of him. Amazement gripped the audience and they began to discuss what happened, what sort of new teaching is this? They asked excitedly. It has such authority. Oops. <laughs> there you go, y'all got raptured. <laughs> Done. <laughs> We just watched the end of time right here. <laughs> All right, let's let's stand. I, f- I feel that's a good word to kind of meditate and reflect upon. Yes. Greater is He who is in you than He who is in the world. And so my prayer is that when we, when we encounter situations and circumstances, that, that we be looking to Jesus and remember, oh, like, and even temptation, folks. I, I, remember, I remember some of the addicts when we were in Hong Kong. They would say, I'm so grateful for the Holy Spirit in my life. Every time I go past those places where I used to be tempted, 
I just pray in the Spirit and I walk in victory. So let's, let's just sing this song as a, as a de- declaration of what Jesus Christ has done for us and the kind of life that we are called to live in and walk in.
hug and tell them have an awesome week.